Hi, welcome to Chavista Chronicles from Caracas. My name is Jesus Rodriguez Espinosa. I'm the editor of Orino Orinoco Tribune. And today is Monday, December the 30th. And I just wanted to to present you the last, uh, like, like a balance for 2019 from our perspective here in Caracas. So I don't have any script. Basically, what I wanted to tell you is that here in Venezuela, Chavismo has been resisting this, 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 which is one of the most aggressive attacks from the U.S. in Venezuelan history. Is, is the the most aggressive one, uh, and uh, and we have been doing, if you ask me, a nice job countering the regime change operation launched by the U.S. with the help of some traders from Venezuela. So basically, just to summarize, in uh, 2019, the first half of the year, we spent it dealing uh, with all our strength uh, countering the regime change operation so that took us from January 5th when they uh, choose uh, Juan Guaido as president of the National Assembly uh, passing through January the 23rd when he, he proclaimed himself uh, interim president and a few minutes later the U.S. government recognized him as uh, the legitimate president of Venezuela, <laughs> which is funny, but sad at the same time because it has had a lot of implications for Venezuela and for Venezuelans. So um, then we had the humanitarian aid uh, false flag operation that were, was launched from Cúcuta in Colombia in February the 23rd and that Venezuelan army and Venezuelan people uh, repelled with bravery if you ask me with convictions uh, with absolute convictions in, in not allowing anyone to violate our, our sovereignty and uh, in that first half of this year that is about to end uh, the climax of the regime change operation earlier the climax climax was the the Cúcuta humanitarian aid between quotations operation uh, but the last event in in that semester was the Kudetar attend that happened on April the 30th, just one day before uh, uh, they, uh, the opposition, I mean, invited for one of the Sicilians D-Day march that they invited to, and it was a failure. And, uh, and since then, what has been happening is that the opposition has been starting to fragment it. And we have been passing uh, most of that first semester uh, passing through different dates of several D-date uh, demonstrations and marches called by the opposition. And each one of them, especially in the last ones, uh, it was evident that the that the capacity to call for people to mobilize was being reduced day after day. So that says a lot about how, according to them, popular uh, uh, Juan Guaido is. And they always talk about polls here and there, but when you see how many people that guy uh, can, uh, you know, call to the street, uh, it's funny. It's really funny. And I'm not saying with this that the opposition disappeared and that the animosity of a lot of Venezuelans, especially middle class, upper middle class Venezuelans against Maduro's government, uh, disappeared. What I'm saying is that they do not trust 
neither uh, Juan Guaido nor the rest of the leadership of the opposition. So that side, from my perspective, is what marked the second half of 2019, which I characterize in terms of the regime change operation. I, I want to talk about other issues later, but and in terms of the regime change operation launched by the U.S., it was characterized by the what I call the negotiation processes. First, we started with uh, uh, the Norway talks that if you ask me where going in I mean there was there were expectations that there were there there were going to be uh, that, that it was going to be a chance for a good negotiation um, but eventually when uh, the US launched in August uh, the last round of US sanctions against Venezuela Venezuelan government decided to stop or to freeze the Norway uh, talks process. And we started uh, uh, a few weeks later with what is called in Venezuela the National Dialogue Table, in which uh, we have been moving politically talking in Venezuela for the last several months. And at the beginning, uh, it was uh, just including uh, minority opposition parties, the ones that are against imperialism, the, the ones that are, that are against uh, uh, U.S. imposing sanctions to Venezuela and opposition uh, betting only on uh, the U.S. invasion as the only tool to work politically, which is anti-politics, if you ask me. So, um, that national dialogue table have evolved in uh, by October and November, uh, they already uh, uh, incorporated, I mean, it, it was agreed to uh, the Chavista bench in the National Assembly to rejoin uh, the National Assembly, and that opened the, the spaces for negotiations in which even the G4 group, which is the hardcore and extremist, not extremist, but most right-wing uh, factors uh, in the opposition, the ones that support Guaido and the U.S. Uh, intervention and sanctions, mm, they uh, actually started to participate uh, in uh, talks with the government and to the point in which, I believe that I'm talking about November, it was agreed not only within the national dialogue table but with participation of those uh, parties that support Juan Guaido it was agreed the, the formation of a, a commission to choose uh, uh, to elect the new authorities for the National Electoral Council uh, which is uh, a very important political step that we have to resolve uh, the first weeks of 2020 because we're going to have elections in Venezuela in 2020 we're going to have the parliamentary elections and 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 and, and of course the opposition is pushing for presidential elections and and in either case uh, you're going to need to have a credible uh, I'm not saying that politically credible uh, electoral council that might allow us to pass through elections without, you know, suffering uh, recognitions or not recognitions and the typical Venezuelan opposition strategy of not recognizing an election when they lose. So we need to solve that problem uh, promptly, if you ask me. And I believe that what happened during the last weeks of this year was terrible in that sense because uh, Chavismo started to lift in immunity to several uh, opposition deputies and I understand the reasons for that. Those guys participated in coup attempts or rebellion attempts uh, but that exacerbated from the opposition side, from my perspective, uh, the radicaliz radicalization and at some point uh, the, the opposition uh, leadership proposed this crazy uh, virtual remote voting 
for uh, parliamentaries that uh, are being uh, prox prosecuted uh, or wanted by Venezuelan justice for participating in uh, uh, destabilizing terrorists or coup plotting. So um, that, that I mean uh, that means that the last two or three weeks of this year were marked by that disagreement, which, if you ask me, uh, get us all Venezuelans tired or or getting tired of you know uh, listening and watching those radical positions from Chavismo and from the opposition that is not what Venezuelans really want if you ask me and I, I, I that's my perception and I'm not talking about Chavismo I'm talking about uh, Chavistas and oppositions that are tired of this polarization and that really want to uh, the leadership of Chavismo and anti-Chavismo to reach some sort of agreement to give us some peace of mind for 2020. Chavismo, uh, Maduro's government in particular, uh, has been, uh, you know, feeling somehow that they are winning the, and I believe that's a, that's a fact, I mean, uh, in, in, in political terms we have been able to uh, counter the regime change operation, but uh, that doesn't mean that we won the war and that we are not susceptible to receive, at, keep receiving attacks from the opposition extremists and from the from the U.S. of course. So, so if you ask me, that's going to be a problem for 2020. We need to uh, resolve the we need to resolve the problems that we have. Uh, in relation to trying to deal with that polarization and the necessity of finding political solutions and um, so that's basically my analysis for 2019 and uh, now going to the economic issues and uh, and uh, how how chavismo feels in the street i believe that uh, that this year the government has been able to disregarding a lot of mistakes uh, we have been able to counter the the economic sanctions that we have been uh, suffering for the last years and disregarding the criticism that uh, has been raised from the left against the economic policies implemented by maduro the hyperinflation that we have in, in 2019 and sorry in 2017 and 2018 has been reduced. Uh, I cannot say that has been defeated, but at least has been reduced, and uh, and and that's important for us Venezuelans. But that doesn't mean that we don't have problems. I mean, Venezuela is a fact that that there is a dollarization in Venezuela right now, and for the last several months. Uh, the, it's difficult to find uh, enough believers. I'm talking about bills, uh, and it, you can see easily uh, all you know uh, Venezuelans right now buying or selling stuff in dollars uh, and, 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 and hanging dollars in their wallet instead of believers. And I understand that's a way to counter the the economic problems especially the inflation but at the same time that that is a big risk for us and I, I if you ask me i believe that the government uh, knows the magnitude of that uh, problem and that's why the government has in recent months has been pushing a lot the petro the cryptocurrency that was launched last year and that has been passing through different stages but uh, if you ask me i believe that this last December the government decided to pay the Christmas bonuses or the year-end bonuses to public, to public employees and retirees uh, with Petros has been uh, helping a lot the practical use of the cryptocurrency Petro in Venezuela's economy and actually there's a lot of media coverage especially from the right-wingers uh, about the, the ways Venezuelans are using to pay with Petro and the government has 
uh, design different ways uh, basically uh, allowing uh, right now uh, paying uh, terminals uh, the ones that are used for credit cards for people to pay uh, uh, with Petros using the Carnet de la Patria which is the, the Patria system that was implemented by Maduro a few years back and that is connected to the Petros system so so I believe that in 2020 we're gonna see a lot of that a lot of Petro being used uh, more and more in Venezuelan economy and I hope that that eventually is going to be the tool to get rid of having a ton of dollars circulating in the economy. So um, our expectations for 2020 in economic terms are connected to that. Uh, we uh, feel that there is a, a leader improvement in Venezuelan economy. Uh, a lot of other economies say that it's a rebound and that's absolutely understandable after you know five years in which the, the, the gross domestic product has been reduced in 60 percent uh, but the truth is that we might keep going down and the fact that we are actually having expectations for 2020 to have economic growth is a positive sign so we are we have good expectations for 2020 in economic terms, but of course everything is going to be connected on how the U.S. increased or reduced uh, uh, their sanctions and their blockade, blockade against Venezuela, and also on how we fight back against those sanctions. So, if you ask me, I believe that we has been Maduro's government has been able to deal very, uh, very. Uh, effectively against U.S. sanctions. We have been seeing an increase in all exports in written for the last two months and I believe that in 2000 uh, in December uh, we're gonna keep seeing a, a, an increase in, in oil exports from Venezuela uh, but at the same time we are dealing with crazy stuff like for the last two or three weeks here in Venezuela especially not in Caracas but especially in the countryside we have been dealing with uh, shortages of gasoline I mean for for cars uh, so there's a lot of trouble right now especially in uh, in the countryside of Venezuela outside Caracas uh, with people doing lines of eight hours six hours one day trying to get gasoline and doing these days of uh, vacations when a lot of people uh, plan to travel that have created a lot of problems for people you know moving around Venezuela and and praying to have uh, to find a gas station open and, and with gasoline so that's a problem of course that's a problem that is connected to uh, US sanctions because with the gasoline we produce need additives need chemicals that are used to uh, to convert oil crude oil into gasoline so those uh, additives uh, always were imported from the US and, and we have been dealing in recent months with the US sanctions so so that's most part of the problem and and, and I all I'm always like go crazy when I see the right wingers talking about uh, that the cost of this is because we are giving away gasoline or oil to Cuba which is a lie because that that relationship has been also affected by US sanctions or that, that this is uh, uh, I mean that you have to blame uh, the corruption of course there's corruption uh, but but I'm not uh, I mean this kind of problems is not a result of corruption itself uh, and we have to fight corruption, but this is a problem that is a result, the direct result of U.S. sanctions, and everyone should know that. Uh, so, so in that sense, that's uh, that's how I see talking economically, 2020. Politically, we're going to have a very busy uh, January. In a few days, they are going to choose the the new president of the National Assembly. And at this point, I'm not sure if we are going to be able to, uh, I mean, if uh, they are going to be able to uh, to elect uh, again uh, Juan Guaido. They say, I'm talking about the opposition, they say that they have enough votes to, to
to have been reelected as president of the National Assembly and in that sense keep pushing the regime change, change operation uh, but uh, from the other side from the dissident sectors of the opposition that has been I mean uh, speaking out loud uh, a lot lately especially after several corruption scandals that exploded in December and November uh, they say that they don't have enough votes and that's why they are trying to they pass this crazy law that allowed opposition deputies uh, uh, voting from abroad uh, and not allowing their alternate uh, uh, deputies to vote for them so that's a problem a political problem and I hope that the opposition leadership in the Venezuela government are going to be uh, are able to I mean uh, are able to solve uh, that polarization and find ways to reach an agreement that allow us to move a little bit more smoothly in political terms in 2020 but of course you have to also recognize that the government cannot uh, be quiet and not doing anything when you find evidence that the right-wingers are still trying radical uh, terrorist attempts like the recent at attempts that they tried to uh, in which they try to uh, take military units in Sucre state, in other state, and then a few days ago they uh, actually attack a military unit in Bolivar state in the south of the, of the country, and actually one military guy was killed, and, and, and most of the, of the military defectors that participated in that operation were, were captured, and we have evidence that they were trained in Colombia, Peru and Brazil and actually five of those uh, military defectors uh, that were uh, not captured uh, jumped to the Brazilian side of the border and Venezuelan authorities uh, didn't want to uh, trespass the border and ask the military in Brazil to uh, capture them and they actually did it but right now they are uh, uh, saying that they are going to, they are not going to turn them back to Venezuela which is uh, 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 more than uh, it's, it's like a big evidence uh, uh, showing how connected are the Brazilian government is the Brazilian government and the Peruvian and the Colombian government in this destabilization attempts against Maduro's government so we are going to we cannot you know keep I mean states Still, uh, in front of those attacks, and we of course have to take radical also decisions to neutralize those uh, terrorist attacks. That of course uh, we know that come mostly uh, with the support of the U.S. and uh, and we have enough intelligence and we have enough uh, unity between uh, the grassroots chavismo and the military in Venezuela to repeal any kind of attack like that. And they are going to keep, you know, uh, crushing, uh, I mean, being crushed by us. But we need to be prepared. So for 2020, uh, I expect that we are going to be able to have a parliamentary election, which is also a very political, important move for the operations because they are very discredited because the lack of results, not only for this last year, but for the five years uh, that they were in power in the National Assembly. So it's going to be very uh, uphill for the opposition to uh, to win elections, parliamentary elections, but uh, we need to keep watching the situation because of course they, they count with a radical anti-Chavista core that always are going to vote for them disregarding what kind of mistake they commit. Uh, but if you ask me, I believe that radical, uh, I mean that oppos even opposition uh, Venezuelans are tired of the situation and I hope that or either either they will there will there will be a lot of abstention in these parliamentary elections from either from from both sides. Um, 
I believe that the, the options for Charisma to win these parliamentary elections are high. So let's see what happened with that. Let's see what happened with the uh, U.S. keep pushing uh, uh, a regime change operation in Venezuela. But we are here, and we are going to uh, defeat any kind of attempt to to erase Chavismo, which is impossible. Uh, uh, erasing Chavismo is something that is impossible to happen. So, uh, and, and we are going to give the keep fighting and uh, and and countering any attacks coming from the U.S. and from any other country that tries to uh, erase the big achievement on Chavismo in Venezuela for the last 20 years. So that's it for this year. I I wanted to end just sending uh, a good. Uh, message of appreciation for all the people that in recent week has been helping us with donations and we are happy because of that because we think that we uh, are not gonna need to switch to google ads uh, in order to find ways to get some sort of revenue and 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 we just want to encourage you to keep doing that because um, of course, uh, at the end of the year, uh, a lot of people uh, make donations, but in January or the first quarter of the year is going to be tough for us. So we uh, uh, keep, I mean, we want to keep encouraging, encouraging you to keep supporting us, to keep reading us, to send us your feedbacks, the things that you uh, let us know, the things that we are doing wrong. And uh, we want to thank you. Actually, we really need some specialists, I mean, um, developers uh, that help us dealing with the speed of our website, which is something that worries us a lot. So thank you a lot. We wish you the best for 2020. And we want you to know that we are going to keep working every day, Monday through Friday, 24-7, in Orinoco Tribune to provide you with accurate uh, progressive information about what happened in Venezuela and the rest of the South. Bye-bye and thank you.